Who's ready to see Kaylin? Yeah. Kaylin, come on out. Welcome, Kaylin. Thank you. I know that your treatment was really involved and that it not only had a, a, a big physical effect on you, but also an emotional one. Absolutely. Um, you know, that was a very dark and traumatic period of my life. Um, Dr. Karimi saw me at my worst, and here I am at my best. But I definitely learned a, a lot about myself. Um, I was, you know, terrified, but I learned through this experience that I'm strong, I am resilient, and I am brave. And I think that that, I think that that was the biggest lesson. And I think, Kaylin, for you, I think so many people tend to dismiss skin cancer as something just so easy, oh, I'll just burn it off, it gets neglected, it often gets long delayed in diagnosis. But I think in your case, it's an incredible example of how while you might see just a little pinpoint at the surface, there's incredible spread underneath. It's often the tip of the iceberg. And so the type you had, which was an infiltrative basal cell carcinoma, as I understand it, actually the most common type of cancer of any type in the United States. But people don't really give it the same attention, often really shocking in terms of the roots and the extension. So Dr. Creamy, tell us about the multiple surgeries Kalen had. Sure. So, uh, like you mentioned, Kaylin's uh, basal cell was a more aggressive subset, and it actually penetrated all the way into her nose. So it had gone full thickness through her nose. So the first step was to clear the cancer. That's always the, the priority. So it actually took multiple attempts to clear the cancer, taking different layers. And it was actually a three-layer closure. We actually had to rotate tissues from the inside to recreate the lining. Then we took cartilage from her ear to recreate the scaffolding of the nose so that it won't collapse with breathing. And then finally, we did a connected flap called the nasolabial flap to connect the tissue. And that actually had to stay connected for three weeks. So that was a very difficult transitional time where you have a very obvious uh, thing having that done to your face. And then three weeks later, once that tissue gets its own blood supply, we were able to disconnect it from the rest of the face. And then it required some management of the scars as well, which we did with some lasers and PRF and, and those types of things to get to where we're at today. So it was a very difficult journey, but Kaylin was so resilient uh, and just I was just so inspired by her strength for something that was really very distressing for, for her, for me, for everybody involved. And to take a step backwards, you had this thing going on on your nose for a while and your primary care doctor took a look at it and, you know, unfortunately, no one did the number one thing that we're trained to do, make a diagnosis. What, what is this thing? And you look at you and you don't look like you have a ton of sun damage, you're young, that you don't look like the typical person that would have Skin cancer, but that's the point. Skin cancer can develop on anybody. On anybody, yeah, and especially people like African Americans will think they can't get skin cancer. It literally can happen to anyone, and you know, sunscreen is for everybody, mm -hmm. and in those protective measures. But Dr. Boucher, what are some of the warning signs of skin cancer? So interestingly, I think a lot of people are familiar with the ABCDs and dark and discolored spots, but actually it's much, much more common to have what Kaylin had, which is a basal cell carcinoma. And in this case, what you always are looking for is a sore or a pimple that doesn't heal, that might be there for a month or more, something that continues to scale, something that just continues to grow insidiously and never quite resolves. So I tell my patients anything pearly or pink that's been there for more than a month should be evaluated. And not just on your face, right? I think you should pay attention to your entire body, including your genital region. So skin cancer can develop anywhere. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, interestingly, when they come from the, in the genital region, sometimes they're related to HPV. Mm -hmm. So people who have a history of genital warts and then get a scaly red rash in the groin area, again, if it's persistent, please have it checked. Yes. Well, Kaylin, thank you for sharing our story. A lot to learn from this for everybody watching. And, and Dr. Creamy, great job, great work, challenging case.